Hello my fellow nerds and welcome. Today we're going to discuss the Deathly Hollows to find out if these legendary items are really that powerful. No. No they are not. The Deathly Hollows are no more special than any other magical item. So with that stated, let's just jump into that wonderful wizarding world of Harry Potter. The Elder Wand, the Wand of Destiny, the Death Stick, the wand that can never lose in a duel. Except for when it does. I actually already did a video on the Elder Wand, and I'll basically just be summarizing that right here. The Elder Wand is made of Elderwood, and what do we know about Elderwood? Well, it produces extremely strong magic, but its loyalty changes very easily. It wants to be with the most powerful wizard around. And what do we know about Thestral Hair as a core? Well, not much. But we do know about Thestrals. Thestrals are invisible creatures that want to remain unseen. So what does this tell me about the Elder Wand? Well, it produces the most powerful magic. Except if you are seeking power, or there is somebody stronger than yourself. This is why the wand works so well for Dumbledore. He knew his weakness was power, so he was an extremely powerful wizard who did not seek it, so the wand stayed loyal to him. The Resurrection Stone. Grindelwald wanted to use it to create an army of Infury, Dumbledore wanted to use it to bring back his parents so that they could watch over his sister, and Harry Potter wanted to use it to bring back his parents so that he could have his loving family back. But what is the stone actually doing? We know that it can't be used to create Infury, and honestly, we know it can't be used to bring back the dead. I believe it is drawing on the user's memories and their love to create reflections of those who have passed on. In the Forbidden Forest scene, we see Harry use the stone, and his parents and Lupin and Sirius come before him. If my theory is correct, their memories are all actually Harry's memories, and their personality is based on Harry's perspective of them when they were alive, because none of them are really there. They're all in Harry's head and they're all in Harry's heart. The Third Hallow, the one we've seen the most throughout the Harry Potter series, the Cloak of Invisibility. Now, we know for a fact that one of the brothers had a thing for Thestrals. When Antioch was making the Elder Wand, he would use their hair as its core, so maybe just maybe, Ignotus Peveril also had a fascination with these magical creatures, and when making the cloak, he would also use their hair. That's it. It explains everything. Ignotus Peveril wove the cloak with Thestral hair and then put a disillusionment charm on it. That's why it never faded with time and your average witch or wizard couldn't see through it. And it also explains, while Mad-Eye and Dumbledore were able to see Harry while he was underneath it, we could assume that it follows the same rules as Thestrals, you have to both see and accept death. Mad-Eye as an Auror would have definitely seen and accepted death, and his eye would have been able to see right through a disillusionment charm. And Dumbledore as the most powerful wizard around would have had no problems with the disillusionment charm. It's perfect. The Deathly Hollows are definitely unique, but how powerful are they really? One way to find out is by comparing them to another magical item, and for this we will use the Deluminator. But how powerful is the Deluminator? Well, it can take light directly from its source, it can restore that light to the source, or it can store it for later. It can also teleport the user to anywhere their heart truly desires. This makes the item extremely useful. In the Deathly Hollows, we see Ron leave Harry and Hermione, 
and at that moment he wishes he could return to them. And when they speak his name, an orb comes out of the Deluminator and enters him right around his heart, instantly teleporting them to their location. Later, we find them trapped in Malfoy Manor, and he uses the stored light in the Deluminator to light up the dungeons so that they all can see each other. The question becomes though, how does this stack up against the Deathly Hollows? The Elder Wand, the most powerful wand in existence. As long as you're already a powerful witcher wizard who's not seeking power. Versus the Deluminator, something that you can use to conceal yourself by taking away light, give you light if you're someplace without it, or teleport yourself. Round 1 goes the Deluminator, the Resurrection Stone, something that has a lot in common with the Mirror of Erised. For some, it can be useful. To others, it can drive them mad. Round 2 easily goes the Deluminator, the Cloak of Invisibility. You can use it to conceal yourself, it never fades, but there are some that can still see through it. For this fact alone, round three goes to the Deluminator. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that the Deathly Hollows have no power, but if it wasn't for the legend, it would neither be sought nor desired. It's not like in a thousand years there's going to be a fairy tale about the Deluminator, but if there was, there'd be those who spend their entire life seeking it out. Well, that's it for today. I know I was a little bit hard on the Hollows, but after finishing the audiobook, just couldn't get this thought out of my head. How much is myth and legend, and how much is reality? We're so quick to put them up on this pedestal of artifacts of immense power, when in all honesty, they're probably not. And then we just glide over the smaller things like the Deluminator, which have far more power than we give them credit. But I hope you guys all enjoyed it. As always, you don't have to hit that like or subscribe, but if you do, I'd greatly appreciate it. And feel free to leave a comment down below and let's chat. I'll see you all next time.